In the unit of physical behavior of matter, we talked about the changes that occur as heat is added to a system. We referred specifically to a heating curve, and we did a lab on cooling curves. I want to run through and label the different components of a heating curve, and then talk about the different equations that are associated with each part. If we start here at the bottom at our lowest kinetic energy, and the lowest amount of heat that's added, this is where our solids are. Our flat section here is where we undergo the process of changing from a solid to a liquid, so both phases are present. Once we've fully changed into a liquid, now we can begin increasing temperature again. Again, our next flat section is where we're changing from a liquid to a gas. And lastly, at top, we have a gas that continues to heat. Within these systems, there's a couple of names you should be familiar with in terms of what these changes are. When we go from a solid to a liquid, that process is called melting. When we go from a liquid to a solid, that's freezing. A liquid to a gas change is vaporization. And a gas to a liquid is condensation. Changes in this direction, going from gas to liquid or liquid to solid, are all exothermic reactions. They give off that energy in order to go to a lower potential energy state. Those that go to higher energies all are endothermic. They absorb energy and undergo this change. There's one other term you should be familiar with as has appeared on the regions exam a couple of times. When a sample changes from a solid directly into a gas, that process is sublimation. Sublimation is where the vapor pressure of the solid is great enough, enough of it can escape the stickiness of the molecules holding them together, and becomes a gas quite naturally without passing through the liquid phase. Again, that's called sublimation. The equations that are of note come into play at these different segments. If we start by looking at the first flat section, we're looking at where we're changing from a solid to a liquid, or a liquid to a solid. The heat that required to undergo this change is equal to the mass of the sample times the heat of formation. Heat of formation is found on the front of your reference tables. And in this case, for solid water or liquid water, it's going to be 334 joules. When it comes to now changing from a liquid to a gas, or a gas to a liquid, the same equation is going to apply with one small difference. Now, instead of talking about heat of fusion, we're talking about the heat of vaporization. Again, on the front of your reference tables, you can find heat of vaporization is 2,260 joules. At these slanted sections where we have a change in temperature, a change in the kinetic energy of the system, now we're talking about the equation where Q is equal to mc delta t. m, again, is the mass of the system. c is the specific heat capacity, which can be found on the front of your reference tables. In the case of water, it's always going to be 4.18. The delta T is our change in temperature. It's going to be the final temperature of the system minus the initial temperature of the system. Once you have these three pieces, and in all cases, the only math you need to do is multiplication, you multiply through and you find the heat that's given off or absorbed by the system in order to undergo these changes.